Okay, today is 24-9-2020. In the previous lecture, you have completed in two lectures, you have completed uh, unit number four, you have started. In that, the contents you have started, the introduction to earth station. And you have seen the types of earth station, that is SSS, DSS, and MSS. And after that, you have seen a single frequency station and gateway station in last two lectures. What is meant by earth station? Can anyone tell me what is meant by earth station? If you don't know what is earth station, then no need to go for next. What is meant by earth station? What is meant by earth station? Arthimane Padil. Mane Patil is there. I don't know what is our station. So, which are the types of our station? Lakshmi, Venusur. So this is your response. If the response is like this, how they are going to select you for an interview? No? Due to this situation, they are going to select on the online. Just you have to respond. Just unmute it and tell me. I don't know. That the require. Sir, so, uh, sir, Earth Station is the collection of equipment which are installed on Earth and which perform the communication over one or more satellites. OK, good. This is what they want. Just you unmute and tell me whatever the answer is there. They want to know. You have to talk something. You have to speak something. Just you are muting and just listening. This is very horrible case is there at the outside. So, be serious about the training. The TNT has spent a lot of money for this your interview, trainings and all. Be serious. And one more thing. On Saturday, there is a tutorial. Be prepared. Those who are not given. Those who are not given, be prepared for one topic. On Saturday. On Saturday, I will not speak anything, not a single word. Just you have to start giving this presentation. Everyone, minimum 10 to 15 students have to give seminar on Saturday, every Saturday. Keep in mind. Again and again, I, I will not tell you. You have to give presentation, you have to give presentation. You have to come forward and start giving the presentation. That's it. Okay, keep in mind on Saturday. Every Saturday there is a tutorial. Do you remember? You have to give presentation. Okay. And you have seen the types of earth station in that. In that earth station, we have seen access to fixed satellite station, satellite service. Second is BSS, broadcast satellite service. And next is mobile satellite service. And fixed satellite service is fixed for it is acts like a base station that is BTS. And broadcast satellite service it acts as your uh, TV, this TV, and the mobile satellite service it is going to use uh, some of the equipments for that. It is going to give some of the services, and those services are nothing but one is maritime, one is land, one is aeronautical, one is personal, one is broadcast. These are the, some of the services it is going to give. That is mobile satellite service. And next one, we have seen the single function, single function station. The single function is nothing but it has to receive or to transmit. These are only the two functions it is going to do. It is one to receive or to transmit the signal. That is only the one function that is 
single function that is your uh, disk tv the gateway station it is connected to the terrestrial network that is what the gateway station and the next we are moving forward Just a minute. It is not presenting. Is it really visible? Yes, sir. Visible. The next topic is first station architecture. Before deciding that, they have to do some of the functions, and they have to decide the architecture of particular earth station. In that particular earth station architecture, they have to uh, divide a particular earth station into different subsystems or different systems. The different systems are nothing but what. the first block is your baseband section so first block is your baseband section and the second block is your radio frequency section and the third block is your supporting facilities and the fourth block is your terrestrial interface this terrestrial interface is connected to your user and to the baseband section whatever the Signal we are passing from user that is to the terrestrial interface, it is reached to the baseband section. First block is baseband section. Second is radio frequency section, and third is supporting facilities, and fourth is your terrestrial interface. Whenever the user wants to make any call, want to do any communication that is to be forwarded through your terrestrial interface anyway the communication signal will be in the baseband signal there is no modulation in that for that modulation the baseband section is required that block is required in that block we are having the baseband processing circuit that is we required uh, some of the circuits to process that baseband signal the baseband processing circuits is connected to the modulator and demodulator what is modulator to modulate the signal to increase the strength of the signal to increase the strength of the signal so we required a modulator in demodulator you have to require a original signal back you require the original signal back at the receiver end modulator is at the transmitter end and the demodulator is at the receiver end so modulator function is to increase the signal and the demodulator function is to receive the original signal back to the receiver that is present in the baseband section and that is connected to the radio frequency section what is the radio frequency section in that some of the equipments are present to increase the signal to strengthen the signal particular signal and to change the frequency band of the particular signal and to remove the noise present in a particular signal all these functions will be done in the radio frequency section in that radio frequency sections the four blocks are present 
one is up converter one is high power amplifier next is low noise amplifier and next is down converter this the below section that is below blocks demodulator down converter and low noise amplifier these are present at the receiver end these are present at the receiver end and the at top of those blocks that is modulator up converter high power amplifier these are present at the at transmitter end those are present at the those blocks are present at the transmitter end modulator to modulate the signal strengthen the signal up converter to increase the signal to by using the converting the, the signal into the strengthen the signal and to change the frequency band of the particular signal and that is to be given to the high power amplifier again to strengthen the particular signal coming from the particular end at the transmitter end we require a high power amplifier the function of amplifier to amplify the signal and that amplified signal can be given to the a uh, particular antenna you have seen in the uh, links up link and down link you are adding we are adding the if the gain is there we are adding if there is a loss is there we are subtracting like this same thing we require amplifier there is a gain okay it is to increase the signal it is to strengthen the signal that signal and signal will be given to the particular antenna at the transmitter end and that will be given to the low noise amplifier the low noise amplifier what is the function of this low noise amplifier to remove the particular noise present in the particular signal noise should be removed a present in a particular signal not a 100% noise will be removed in a particular signal almost all the signal the 0.99% of the noise should be present in a particular almost all the signals 0.99% should be present in a particular signal without noise we can't receive the signal and that removed noise signal will be given to the down converter the function of this down converter to decrease the signal to receive the original signal back that is to be given to the demodulator and that original signal will be received at the receiver and to do all these functions to do all these functions we are required two blocks one is baseband section one is rf section in these two sections is supporting by the supporting facility the third block the supporting facility one is environmental condition second is monitoring and control and third is power supply all this supporting facilities is 100% required to do all this process what is facilities required the environmental con condition is very very important for this because we don't know the weather condition at any time weather will change so signal will be will get interference will not get the signal for sufficient time so that is one of the facility so environmental condition is going to support this two section that is baseband section and rf section monitoring and control the monitoring section and the controlling section will be present at the earth station itself what is done by this monitoring section whatever the signal we are getting from the satellite through these two sections and that should be monitored and that should be controlled at the earth station itself particular satellite is receiving the signal and that particular satellite will be transmit that that signal to the earth station the signal is quality or not everything will be controlled or monitoring through the earth station so that block is required that is monitoring and control and the third block is 
power supply in this power supply what are the two requirements we require in power supply one is your solar panels one is your battery the supporting that is uh, called as supporting facilities a power supply is nothing but battery and solar panels if solar panels are not able to give the energy to the satellite the one more option is there that is a battery battery is going to give a particular energy to the particular satellite so these are the supporting facilities present at the earth station architecture so this is what uh, earth station architecture earth station architecture consists of mainly three blocks one is basement section one is rf section and one is supporting facilities similarly there is a same explanation is here the major components of an earth station is the rf section the baseband equipments and the terrestrial interface next in addition every earth station has certain supporting facilities the supporting facilities are one is weather condition one is monitor and control and one is power supply such as power supply unit with adequate backup it requires a backup so monitoring and control equipment and thermal and environmental condition unit that is to heating and air conditioning etc all these functions will be supporting to the two sections one is basement section and one is rf section similarly they have given the rf section antenna sub system you have studied this antenna sub system in second unit which are the different types of antennas we are using horn antenna helical antenna different types of antennas we are using the up converter and the high power amplifier is present at the rf section in the up line channel and the antenna sub system low noise amplifier and the down converter in the down link channel there is a uplink see they are telling this one as the uplink modulator up converter and high power amplifier modulator up converter and high power amplifier this block is called as uplink and demodulator down converter and low noise amplifier that is your down link basement section it performs modulation or demodulation function with the specific equipment required depending upon the modulation technique and the multiple access method employed whenever we are going to strengthen the signal or to receive the original signal back to the, at the receiver end we require some of the techniques those techniques are fdma tdma and cdma these are the three main techniques to require to modulate and to modulate demodulate the signal so we require multiple access techniques similarly for terrestrial interface it may be connected directly to the user in some application the terrestrial network could be a fiber optic cable link or microwave link or even a combination of the two if there is a wired connection if there is a wired connection we require a fiber optic cable or microwave this is a wireless one is wired that is require optical cable if there is a wireless we require a microwave signal or both in addition to the three above mentioned components of a station every a station has support facilities such as see there tracking control and monitoring equipment power supply backup and environmental conditioning unit all these points you have studied in second unit always the earth station is present at the earth for the communication purpose we require the sum of the equipment and uh, those equipments are called as sub systems a sub systems are nothing but 
one is tracking you have to track a particular satellite where it is located where it is heading how much time it is uh, taking to revolve around the earth moon or the sun everything will be tracking by sitting at the earth station you have to control and to monitor the particular satellite how much is the fuel is remaining in the particular satellite is it revolving around the sun is it revolving around the earth or the moon is it stable or not is it maintaining its orbit or not everything will be controlling and monitoring equipment is required power supply you know similarly for environmental conditioning in it and the sec next point the next point in your syllabus he has mentioned is earth station design consideration while designing the earth station we require some of the parameters while designing the earth station we require some of the parameters you have seen previously the earth station architecture in that earth station architecture you have seen some of the blocks those blocks are doing their functions particular function to receive the signal to strengthen the signal to remove the noise and to control and to monitor and to see the weather conditions everything everything but while designing the station what are the parameters you have to calculate what are the parameters you have to calculate that is very important in this parameters are the first step involves the identification of a stationary requirement specification what are the a station actually required that requirement is very important which in turn governs the choice of system parameter and the second step is about identifying the most cost effective architecture cost effective architecture that achieves the desired specification that is what they are going to select a particular architecture which is most effective next the requirement specification includes the types of service offered which are the services you have seen in the previously previously while designing the earth station they are going to decide a particular services which are the services it is going to give that is we have seen in types of earth station one is fixed satellite service second broadcast satellite service mobile satellite service these are some of the services and which are the communication requirements we require once we launch a satellite one is telephone one is a data one is television and many more required the baseband quality at the destination system capacity and reliability reliability is very very important so reliability means it is to be particular reliable the particular satellite is reliable or not working properly or not everything will be monitored in this and the capacity of a particular satellite whatever the equipments we are going to integrate in a particular satellite that is very very important that integration of particular satellite a particular sensors how much is the power supply solar panels efficiency battery efficiency everything is very important and everything is working properly till the end of the satellite life that is what a reliable that all the equipments are reliable or not working properly or not in the right side the major system parameters relevant to a station design include the main important parameter you have to calculate is while designing the earth station is eirp effective isotropic radiated power i think you remembered or not effective isotropic and radiated power is a combination of transmitter power into transmitter gate pt into vd 
Now remember this EIRP that is specific to isotropic radiative power is equals to Pd into Gd. And the receiver figure of merit, you have studied in third unit, figure of merit, system to noise ratio, SNR, signal to noise ratio, that is SNR, and G by T ratio, that is G by T, that is gain to transmission ratio of screening, third unit, system noise, temperature you have seen, you have solved some of the numerical system noise temperature, that is one of the parameters you have to calculate, and interference, and all over the tracking error. Almost all the parameters you have to calculate while designing this earth station. See, these are the performance parameters you have to calculate. The performance parameters are nothing but one is EIRP, effective or equivalent isotropic radiated power. The second is figure of marriage, that is G by T. EIRP is effective or equivalent isotropic radiated power. That is a combination of high power amplifier plus transmitting antenna, PT into GT. It is given by the product of the power output high power amplifier at the antenna and the gain of transmitting antenna. So that is EIRP is a combination of PT into GT, that is transmitter power into transmitter gain. It has to be expressed in decibels. If you want to convert it into the decibel value, I was told you, you have to just apply a log, 10 log of Pt. If it is multiplication is there, that becomes plus. If there is a division is there, that becomes minus, that is subtraction. That is 10 log of Pt plus 10 log of Gt. It has to be expressed in decibel. So EIRP is defined for both a station transmitting antenna as well as satellite transmitting antenna. That is a gain, Pt, that is transmitting power into the transmitting gain. Similarly, for a receiver figure of merit, in this receiver figure of merit, what you have seen? It tells us about the sensitivity of the receiving antenna is going to decide how much is the sensitivity of uh, receiving a uh, signal. The sensitivity of human voice is 20 to 20 kilohertz, like this. The sensitivity of uh, receiving signal and the no noise amplifier combine the weak received signal. And it is the ratio of receiving antenna gain to the system noise temperature. And the system noise temperature you have studied that is the total system noise temperature T is equals to T1 plus T2 plus T3 like this. And the gain to transmission ratio is expressed in decibel per Kelvin. And G by T that is gain to transmission of the station may be enhanced by increasing the receiver antenna gain. Hmm. Similarly, for gain to transmission ratio, may be enhanced by increasing the receiving antenna gain or lowering the noise temperature or both. This is these two parameters are very, very important while designing the earth station. While designing the earth station, you have to consider first is your architecture is very important. After once the architecture has been designed, the second part, important point is your supporting facilities important. After once this supporting facilities and architecture is finalized, they are going to do the designing for performance parameters for designing. And these performance parameters is going to decide the strength of the particular signal that is to calculate effective isotropic radiated power and to calculate the figure of merit, that is G by T ratio. And next is a station design optimization. You have to optimize it 
with respect to this generalized g by t ratio what is g by t ratio we have studied in third unit that is g by t is directly proportional to c by n g by t is directly proportional to carrier to noise ratio g by t is equals to c by n minus of eirp effective isotropic radiative power and some of the losses are present that is path loss lp plus lm is your miscellaneous loss and boltzmann constant k for the generalized expression for g by t is c by n minus eirp plus lp plus lm plus k where c by n comma eirp comma lp comma lm and k are carried to total noise power spectral density you have to calculate the spectral density with respect to that satellites effective isotropic radiated power path loss link margin and boltzmann constant this expression you have written here for a minimal cost per station g by t should be minimized this can be possible by either using relatively higher eirp in the satellite or being able to afford a lower carrier to noise ratio or both you have to require a limited section in the irp and lower carrier to noise ratio and the complexity and cost issues depends on one is a station irp antenna tracking requirements traffic handling capacity and terrestrial interface requirements in addition there are international regularity issues and tech technical constraints that drive the optimization process that is what the actual concept of this station architecture and who they are going to test a particular earth station while testing this particular earth station that is very important and unit and subsystem level testing a subsystem level testing is nothing but whatever the equipment you are using in a subsystem earth station subsystem that has to be tested before integrating in the particular satellite and the system level system whenever before launching any satellite you have to test a particular system that is to be very very important first unit and subsystem level testing done at the manufacturer premises means while manufacturing a particular satellite it has to be do the testing first has to do the testing of all the equipment all the equipment test data is made available to the subsystem designer making use of the components whatever the data it is getting from the satellite that is to be available at the a uh, station different uh, subsystems are compromisingly testing for their electrical mechanical and environmental condition so before integrating any of the satellite installing any of the satellite they are to be uh, testing in respect to the electrical heating shock they have to give the particular shock to the particular equipment they have to test up mechanical testing is there it is to be reliable for particular weather condition or not that test has to be done that is environmental specification second one is system level testing it is carried out after sub system test testing and integration has been completed once all the equipment and sub system has been tested and once the all the integrated integration has done all the equipment have been integrated in a particular satellite it has to be completed that starts a mandatory state those states are transmit cross polarization isolation measurement these tests are nothing but what you have to test a particular parameter one is eirp one is receiver figure of merit one is signal to noise ratio everything you have to test mandatory test and additional test is antenna pattern measurement which antenna we have to use with respect to that pattern that is lineup test these are some of the earth station 
architecture and consideration design consideration and parameters you have to be everything done done under this earth station architecture this is very important for this earth station architecture okay we will stop here the next class will start the next point next two lectures is complete this unit it requires two units uh, two lectures to complete for fourth unit for fifth unit requires only three unit, three lectures to complete fifth unit very small lecture small unit so be prepared for this tutorial for a presentation on saturday okay don't forget be prepared so we will stop here give your attendance So submit your application form that is get application form and payment receipt keep in mind so at all madam if you have any query ask her call her directly and ask your query